You are watching the remake of episode 100. My five favorite Linux distributions for beginners. And we're going to do that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. All right, I had to pull down my 100th episode outlining my five favorite distributions for Linux newcomers due to a couple of factors. One of them can be read about on Tech Dirt, and the other one being that the video was made almost five years ago and a lot has changed. During that time, I had the opportunity to try out a lot of great Linux distros. And I also started a community where I interact with Linux users every day. So in the spirit of how my original 100th episode was filmed, I bring you my favorite Linux distributions for beginners. And when I say beginner, I am referring to competent PC users who have been using other operating systems for a long period of time and have an understanding of how computers work. With all of that out of the way, let's begin with number five. And that one goes out to Ubuntu. Ubuntu is arguably the most popular Linux distro on the market, but not necessarily the most liked. It uses the Unity desktop, which is powered by their own implementation or replacement of Xorg called Mir. It is relatively easy to learn, and while it does not have a familiar look and feel out of the box that most Windows users would be looking for when they're transitioning over to Linux, there are plenty of other versions which do, such as Kubuntu, which has the KDE desktop, or Zubuntu, which has the XFCE desktop. Now, Ubuntu has one of the largest online communities, and common problems can be easily solved through the forums. So yeah, my number five pick goes out to the official canonical releases. Kubuntu, Zubuntu, Lubuntu, Ubuntu Mate. Say, why don't they call that one Mubuntu? <laughs> guess that's like pouring acid down someone's ear, hey? <laughs> okay, I guess I should have skipped the coffee today. Number four, this one goes out to Linux Mint. This Ubuntu derivative features its own desktop called Cinnamon, which is geared toward providing end users a familiar Windows-like user experience with the added benefit of being very easy to customize. Everyone was excited about GNOME 3 when it came out, right? <laughs> yeah, I know what you're thinking. And the Linux Mint team sees the opportunity to improve it and make it more usable. Like Ubuntu, Linux Mint has a very large user base, and everyday issues can be solved through either searching Mint or Ubuntu's forums. Mint was one of the first distributions that convinced me to kick Windows to the curb. I was able to boot Mint from a live media, and it powered all of my devices on my laptop computer. I was blown away because I never saw a Linux distribution do that before. So that in of itself started my happy marriage with Linux, and Linux Mint continues to hold a place in my heart for its contributions to the community. My number three pick goes out to OpenSUSE. And I gotta tell you guys, it was a tough call for me on this one, because I wanted to mention a distribution which has the best implementation of KDE. And I would have to say that one goes out to OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE has a very large community for obtaining support, and the desktop experience is as user-friendly as it can possibly get. They have Leap, which is their stable branch, or Tumbleweed, for those of you who want to be on the cutting edge of software. That is their rolling re release version. 
And if that is not enough, you can even visit SousaStudio.com. You heard that correctly. That is SousaStudio.com. And build your own distribution. And you can build it from their web page. Yeah, anyone can build their own distribution easily. I even demonstrated that one uh, being used in my 200th episode. So at the end of the day, OpenSUSE brings a lot of innovation to the table, and it's well worth your time to give it a try. This next Ubuntu derivative has been running in my household for the past two years and has never failed. Linux Lite uses the XFCE desktop, which is super easy to use and customize. Many people transitioning over from Windows will love the familiar user interface. I have further details on this in my uh, Linux Lite is a great replacement for Windows XP video or something along that lines. Uh, because it is based on Ubuntu, solutions can be easily found through several websites. I set this up on my mom's computers. She has no technical skills, yet she can get her everyday tasks done from reading email, gaming in a protected virtual machine, watching videos, or even video conferencing. Linux Lite lets her get the job done. And not only is it a great desktop, it also made a great media center. And I gotta tell you guys, you guys have heard me say this before, and I'm gonna say it again. If a 73-year-old lady with limited computing experience can use this, anyone can. Now, just about everyone knows I have been using this distribution myself for the past three years, and it has been the most trouble-free, user-friendly experience ever. That's right, I pick Manjaro as my favorite distribution for beginners. Now, some of you are probably saying right now, what the heck have you been smoking? With almost seven years of sobriety under my belt, I can say this with a clear, sound mind. And hear me out on this. If any of my points do not convince you, then you'll just have to try this out for yourself to see what I mean. Most people who are considering Linux already have some sort of technical skills with the computer, and they know how to search online for support. Out of the box, Manjaro provides the end user with a desktop experience that is familiar to Windows users. The XFCE desktop is super easy to use and customize, and the Manjaro team always brings in the latest features. Manjaro is a rolling release, meaning that you only install it once and you never have to install an upgrade because there is no end of life for this operating system. You do, however, need to keep the system updated regularly to avoid any potential problems. I keep the system updated each time my notifier tells me there is an update and those updates never even once resulted in a broken system. That is a great track record, considering that Manjaro is the longest-running distribution I have ever had on my computer. I want to point out that I am on the stable branch, and I have no intention of trying out the testing repos, even though the developers stated they are relatively safe to use. Manjaro has graphical tools for everything, from installation to system management, so you can use it without ever having to open a terminal. The terminal commands are also easier to learn than those on Ubuntu, as Matthew Moore demonstrated in one of his videos. So, from managing multiple kernels, managing users, or detecting hardware, Manjaro makes it easy for end users to get the job done, and you can do it with a graphical user interface or a terminal. It's your choice. If there is something you need that is not in the software repository, you can get it from the Arch user repository, and Manjaro provides two graphical tools you can use to get those packages. Pemic and Octopi have been tooled with user friendliness in mind. As stated, the terminal commands are so easy to remember, I find myself using the terminal rather than using the GUI for package management. So, with the repos 
and the AUR combined, there is almost an unlimited supply of packages to choose from. You have better odds of finding a package, though, if it is popular. Manjaro has a large community, great support, and excellent documentation. And because it is based on Arch, you can benefit from reading the guides on the Arch Wiki. And everyone knows that the Arch Wiki is bar none the best Linux documentation available anywhere. Now, in a perfect world, nothing is ever perfect. Fishman loves Linux, and Matthew Moore have told me they have had issues with older hardware on Manjaro. While I am unable to duplicate those problems, the best I can do is suggest trying an older LTS kernel. And if you are in the small percentage of users who are experiencing legacy hardware problems, the other mentions in this video may be to your benefit. Manjaro uses newer kernels, and support for older hardware gets dropped in some of the newer kernel releases. And at the time of this filming, the oldest LTS kernel supported by Manjaro is 3.10. At the end of the day, I think I've made a pretty strong case for why I feel Manjaro is the best distribution for beginners. And for me personally, it has been the best user experience which no other distribution has been able to compare to, and that is why I still use it. So, excellent job to Philip Mueller and the Manjaro team. All right, those were my five picks for the best user-friendly distros, and I'm sure a lot of you may disagree with me, even though I tried my best to explain why I chose the items I did. So, this is where you come in. If you know of a distribution which is great for newcomers, Please feel free to comment by hitting the link in the description and leave a post on the forum, or leave a comment for other YouTubers in the space below. I encourage you to explain why you feel a distribution may be beneficial for the newcomer, as it may influence someone's decision to give it a try. I would also like to get your opinion on the format that this video was presented in. Do you like this format, or... Do you prefer it when I am composited into the video using my green screen technique? I will throw up a poll with this video on the forum so you guys can vote. I am not sure what the next video will be about, but I am sure I will have something in the mix. Peace out!